GIs were expected to fight in all terrains. Cold, warm, you name it. For cooler weather especially, just having the wool uniform won't cut it. This is where field jackets come in. Field jackets acted as an additional layer to your uniform, acting as a replacement for what had been used since World War I, which was a fitted four-pocket tunic, a common choice to see among European armies even into World War II. The United States' earliest adoption of the field jacket was in the late 1930s, with the adoption of what became known as the Parsons jacket. With a design similar to that of a civilian windbreaker jacket of the period, they would lay the foundation for the production of what would become one of the most iconic jackets of the USGI in World War II. The Jacket Field OD, commonly referred to as the M41 jacket, would be the next iteration. Bearing an extremely striking resemblance to its predecessor, with an outer shell made of cotton poplin in the shade OD number 2, as well as a wool flannel lining for insulation. These jackets were designed with mobility in mind. Rather than the length of something like a tunic, these jackets were cut off at the hips. With two slanted pockets on the torso, a zipper to close the jacket as well as buttons to protect the zipper from the elements. These jackets looked almost identical to the Parsons jacket if it weren't for two glaring differences. One being the removal of the pocket flaps as well as the addition of epaulets on the shoulders. The M41 saw service all throughout the war, however their appearance would decrease considerably towards the end. While they were made with mobility in mind, they lacked in the utilitarian category. The jacket only having two slanted and shallow pockets made it difficult for soldiers to carry necessary tools and personal items around with them. This forced GIs to come up with creative alternatives to make do with the lack of cargo space. Affectionately known as the GI gut, soldiers would tighten their cartridge belts over their jackets and stuff their belongings into it, creating the resemblance as though they had a large gut when it was really just their personal effects, extra ammunition, and other such items that they did not have space for in their pockets. In doing this, they solved one problem and created another, making the slanted pockets more difficult to use. In addition to the problem of cargo space, it did not do its intended purpose of acting as a windbreaker very well either. Being that they were made out of thin cotton and wool, they were also produced in a cheap and easy manner to keep with the demands of the war effort. They were not exactly the most quality of garments. Because of these shortcomings, the US military was forced to develop a new design to meet the needs of the fighting men. With these shortcomings in mind, the Army had in development around 1941 a jacket with the intended use for cold weather climates. Designated as the Jacket Combat Winner, it was made as a set with its own trousers and cap. Most commonly known as the Tanker Jacket for being primarily issued to armored units to help them endure the cramped, cold conditions of their vehicles. They also saw very widespread use among infantrymen during the winters, and were even popular amongst airmen. While these jackets were in many respects an improvement, they aren't so much a year-round jacket, and it is advised to do thorough research on the division you are portraying before choosing to use it. These jackets did a much better job of retaining heat. Rather than using thin cotton poplin, their outer shells were made out of thick cotton twill, as well as a lining made out of melted wool, which is much thicker compared to flannel. The cuffs, collar, and waistband were made from knitted wool, which was much more effective at retaining heat. They were designed with a high waist to help with maneuverability, as well as two hidden slanted pockets in the front, which were an improvement upon their initial design. The jacket closed with a zipper, but did not have the button flap the M41 has. Both of these jackets served their purpose well enough, but the military was not satisfied. Development went into a jacket that could be used year-round effectively, as well as hold much more storage compared to its predecessors. Enter the M43 jacket. Designated as the Field M1943, this was the final standard issue jacket to make its way into the European theater of operations. The jacket was structured using cotton sateen fabric dyed in OD number no. 7 for its outer shell. These uniforms, much like the tankers, were designed as a set. In extreme weather conditions, they were designed to have separate liner system worn underneath. This liner was made with a cotton sateen outer shell with a pile inner lining. These jackets were issued to the 3rd Infantry Division in early 1944 for field testing during the Battle of Anzio. They would not see widespread use among most divisions until late fall of 1944, when the jacket became the standard issue. With that in mind, please be sure to do thorough research on your specific division you plan to portray, as the pile liner and trousers were not issued widespread as the jackets. This jacket was made with layering at the forefront. Because of this, the jackets were incredibly baggy 
which also help with their mobility. To solve the issue of storage, they featured four reinforced cargo pockets. This made them longer compared to previous models. Unlike the jackets before, a rain hood was also an attachable option for your jacket, being put on through the buttons that hold the epaulets. As opposed to its predecessor, the M41, the M43's color tab was much larger. This made insulation in colder weather climates much more effective compared to the 41. The M43 would be the basis for future military field jackets for decades, with the final variation being decommissioned in 2009. Now you may be saying, alright I know the drill, where can I find these jackets? Well, before we get into that, there's something else that needs to be discussed. It is very critical to recognize that over time a company's quality of their products could change, sometimes for the better and other times for the worst. It is your responsibility as the buyer to keep up to date with what is considered a quality product for your impression. When making your first purchase of a jacket for your impression, you should take into account what jacket is going to suit you best for most impressions. We will always recommend you go with an early war option first. These saw more widespread usage in the grand scheme of the war. It is highly advised when first starting out to refrain from purchasing more specific items that weren't used at all times through the year and by the majority of enlisted men. So, taking into account what we've just said, when you are first starting off, it is not an absolute necessity to purchase a tanker jacket, unless the unit you are portraying is heavily documented using them throughout the war. It is an item that does not need to be prioritized, also, it is not necessary to purchase a 43 jacket. These items can go on the back burner till you have assembled your basic infantryman impression, meaning, when starting out, the M41 jacket is the way to go. When searching for an M41 jacket, it is crucial to take a number of factors into consideration. These are cut, fit, material, and color. While the M41s are one of the most common field jackets reproduced, a lot of companies surprisingly don't hit all these marks. While there are a number of different companies producing the jacket, only two really fit the demands. These are at the front and World War II impressions. Please keep in mind that these are not the only companies making reproduction M41s. These are quite simply the two companies that we have interpreted as having the most quality uniforms out of the bunch. Over time, at the front's M41 jackets unfortunately have not remained true to the original materials used during World War II using cotton flannel as opposed to wool. They do it primarily for cost-effective production. However, compared to a large number of reproduction companies, their uniform's proportions are one of the closest. While a good number of other companies use the correct materials, they can often fall short when it comes to ensuring their proportions look correct. Some make their torsos too long or their pockets too low. For an option that features the proper proportions and materials, World War II Impressions M41 is without a doubt the best. On the other hand, its $300 price tag can prove to be off-putting. For an entry-level tanker jacket, at the front would prove as a good starter option. Although the lining is a plush fleece, the pricing and overall build of the jacket are hard to compete with when first starting. Over time, however, there are other companies that prove to have a much higher quality jacket compared to these, as well as those of lesser quality. Much like the M41, the M43 is produced and sold by the majority of reproduction companies. At the release of this video, there are three companies in particular that make very good jackets. At the front, What Price Glory, and the Quartermaster Inspector. Each of these jackets have their pros and cons, however, it is up to you as the buyer to decide which of these options works best for you. That of course goes for all of these jackets, and any uniform pieces that you purchase. Read reviews and look on online forums to find out which one works best for you. Whether stateside or fighting the enemy far from home, GIs relied on jackets to protect them from the elements, as well as carry and safeguard their sacred, personal belongings. Without such a vital piece of their uniform, who knows how these men would have managed. With all that in mind, we hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to stay tuned for our future episodes. And remember... You're in the army now, you're not behind the plow. You'll never get rich by digging a ditch, you're in the army now. You're in the army now, you're in the army now. You'll never get rich on the salary which you get in the army now.